The Big 12's next key in expansion and staying alive is poaching from the ACC. How quickly can we see that happen? This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake Toll from America's number one Big 12 podcast, Locked On Big 12. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. That is TJ Pittenger, who is the expert on all things expansion from the ACC and beyond from college football addiction. TJ, as we get into ACC implosion, Florida State, Clemson, who the Big 12 can grab in today's show. Let's start with a timeline because it seems like one that's been expedited as we've read the grant of rights that Florida State helped expose. How soon, if you're a Big 12 fan and you want it to be sooner than later, can we bet on the ACC not existing anymore? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a a semi-decent chance that you could have some movement in the next few months that that really is detrimental to the ACC. I I think you could see some things start to happen. I think you could see Florida State, Clemson, others, maybe UNC start to announce, hey, these are our intentions. I don't think anything's going to – I've even thrown out some scenarios and talked about some things that could impact this year in the ACC. Nothing's really going to impact other conferences, I wouldn't think, until – Maybe that 2025 year. I'd really guess further, though, that it'd probably be the 2026 year, unless the conference truly can dissolve before June 30th, before Cal, Stanford, and SMU take part of the conference and join in as full members, voting members. If the ACC can dissolve, which maybe there's a 50-50 chance of that with with uh, the Magnificent Seven, as Brevin Murphy said, and, yep. and maybe one more team. If the ACC dissolves, then maybe you get some action quicker. I still think all the teams would play their schedule this year as right. it's laid out. I mean, there, there's no impact from that aspect that, that I think can happen, but... In that scenario, maybe you could get a team or two to come over for 2025. I would really peg it more as likely in 2026, though, is when you'd you'd start to see some teams kind of head over to the Big 12 from the ACC, if I had to guess at it right now. From the standpoint of a Florida State or a Clemson, and you're an FSU guy, someone who covers them so closely, is there a rush? Do these two schools want to be out as soon as possible? And what is the benefit if they are? I think they do want to be out as soon as possible because there would just be finality to the situation, right? They're in court right now to try and figure out well, what are we going to do? How much are we going to have to pay? Well, what's the timeline look like? What's the situation look like? When can we, when can we start having official talks with the sec and the big 10 and not be talking to a consultant somewhere that's talking with them as well. So uh, to me, yeah, there's a, there's an urgency. There's a rush for that. Um, I expect them to announce Florida state specifically Clemson. I would, I would lean towards yes as well. I expect them to announce something before the August 13th deadline, which is when you'd have to let them know about the next year. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I think that, that is the rush. I think they know they're gone. I think they know that 2024 is probably their last year in the ACC, but I think the rush is just to get it done and and start to move forward. One of the big points of conversation that I've mentioned on this show is ESPN's opt out and they can do it in 2025 though. The contract will run through 2027, but it seems like there's just no way that ESPN and the ACC will have a firm relationship past 2027. Do you think we even get that far? Is there a world where we get to that year and the AC still ACC is still running and gunning as it is? Well, I I think it's going to get really interesting if we get to a point where, uh, let's say the conference doesn't dissolve over the next couple of days and the, uh, you know, next couple of months, right before June 30th and Florida State leaves. And what we've talked about is the composition clause, which says, well, you've got to have this number of teams in your conference or else ESPN can renegotiate. Well, what if Florida State, North Carolina, and Clemson leave, but then you backfill with SMU, Cal, and Stanford, and the number of yeah. teams is the same, but obviously the value, like the ACC is getting a heck of a deal at that point. What do they do, right? What does ESPN do at that point? Can they just at that point say like, ah, yeah, well, we're not doing this without, we, we mm-hmm. signed this agreement because Florida State and Clemson and others were in here. We're we're not doing it now. So what happens at that point? I mean, I, yeah, could I see the ACs or the ESPN saying, yeah, we're not doing this. Like, 
like we're we're calling it right now. We're calling it quits. And then ESPN, and the ACC end up in court as well to to fight it out. Um, is there a chance? Absolutely. I mean, I, 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 I mean, ESPN, if they just continue to pay that money that they're paying right now to the ACC, though, it is lower than, you know, that's Fleur State and Clemson's whole argument, yeah. though, it is much lower than what people want. Would they continue to pay that? I mean, I'd be pretty surprised by that. I, I think they would try and get out of it before that 2027 year. Who did this? Do we do we point at Jim Phillips? Do we point at college football expansion and the matriculation toward a power two? Or is it solely on an ESPN, the TV networks that that pile in the money? Like if you are a general fan, if you're a Boston College fan, who, by the way, it looks very bleak for right now, who do we blame? Well, the 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 thing to do if you're a fan of a of a lesser program, which I don't want to upset anybody, but I don't know how many of them are listening it's money. to the, yeah, yeah. the show, you know, like um I mean, the thing is to just blame Florida State, and then and that makes all your problems get a little bit better. Yeah. But now, I I don't I don't even think it's Jim Phillips' fault. I think these problems pre exist him. Um, I, you know, a lot of there's been a lot of talk about the Swaffords, um, and mm-hmm. and Raycom and the nepotism there, and and um, you know, the ACC, the ACC. I mean, the ACC and its leadership are honestly to blame. I mean, they had I, I said this yesterday and got some flack for it, but like. The team of the 80s is in the ACC in Miami yeah. and the team yeah. and I, they've not held up there in the bargain too. I get it. And then the team of the 90s, right? Like you want to argue Nebraska or Florida State. That's fine. Nebraska had less wins, more championships. Florida State had more head to head, whatever. However you want to look at that. One of the teams of the 90s is in your conference as well. And then a team that won a championship within the last 10 years is in your conference as well. Yeah. And then you've got Clemson who's won two in the last 10. And so what has the ACC done to capitalize on that? What has the ACC done to, um, you know, really get their values worth, get, get what they deserve. And their leadership has been um, very set in its ways. They voted against college football playoff expansion, which obviously hurt Florida state last year. Um, They, they, they have been behind the ball on a lot of things. And I think it mostly comes down to what their priorities are. And their priority has always been basketball in the ACC. They've always prided themselves on that Duke Carolina, that basketball conference. And then football got good with Florida state and Clemson and others. But they're a basketball conference that's been their focus. And so their focus hasn't been on building, expanding, doing what they can to build things up. There was no foresight. There was no leadership that was really ready to take this uh, by the take the bull by the horns, right? To be cliche and run. And that's really the issue. So from the Swaffords to just really the whole mindset of the ACC is really why they're in the situation they're in now. And if we've learned one thing from my show or your show or numbers, it's that basketball does not push the envelope. When we talk expansion, when we talk about teams and their value in college athletics, basketball is just not going to get you where football does. And that's across the board, specifically when it comes to TV deals, though, two programs, Florida State and Clemson, that have embodied that, that basketball has been on the back burner despite Clemson's success and Florida State's even in the last decade. Football is what makes those two schools and makes them valuable. But are they valuable enough to be in the SEC, the Big Ten, or could they fall to the Big 12? That's a question that seems asinine, but maybe there's a a point to talk about there coming up next here on Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is where I go to make money. I was like, oh, rent was due the other day. Well, FanDuel hooked me up. And the best part is FanDuel.com forward slash locked on is where you can go to make money. I, I would Shane Bieber. Have you ever heard of Shane Bieber? He's a pitcher for the Cleveland Guardians. And I don't care about Shane Bieber or the Cleveland Guardians. But I saw he had this strikeout prop. It was like seven strikeouts. And I thought, that's weird. He averages like eight or nine on the season. What if I put a couple of dollars on that at FanDuel? And guess what I did? I made money. New customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is 200 bucks you can use to bet on MLB, NBA, NHL, the basketball tournament that's still going on that has no Big 12 teams in it, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to make your first bet a big win. New customers, $200 in bonus bets, any winning $5 bet at America's number one sports book. That is FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. TJ Pittenger here with us to talk Clemson, Florida State, 
and the Big 12. One of these things is not like the other. And I wouldn't (laughs) have made the case a week ago, right, that there was any chance for a relationship between those three entities. But then Dennis Dodd, who is at CBS Sports, that's those are three big letters, puts in this emergency scenario where those two schools land in the Big 12. And while that sounds asinine to me, when you read that or you hear that, TJ, what comes to mind for you? That if Florida State and Clemson are doing all this and paying the attorney fees and making this stink and putting themselves in a very negative light in the court of public opinion and uh, fighting this battle to no offense to the Big 12 to wind up in essentially the same position that they're in right now monetarily with the ACC, but then worse because you've got to travel to play all those big 12 teams and not play all the schools in your backyard. Then heads need to roll at Florida state and Clemson. Like, and I, I am very close with Florida state's AD. I've got pictures of him holding my kid. Like we're, we're close, but if that's the case, then we need to look for a new AD at Florida state and Clemson needs to do the same thing as well. And I don't that. And so I'm willing to say that because I don't think that's what ends up happening, but yeah, now the big 12 has some built-in advantages. I get that. And most of it is stability because it does look like they're going to stand around for a while and, and not be the ACC that craters. So I will give that, that would be the one better situation that you'd be in by being in the big 12 as, as compared to being in the ACC, which does look like it's going to crumble. However, that's not worth it. That is not because you could have just stayed in the ACC and kept that conference going by Florida State and Clemson existing there. And maybe you go pull a USF or you pull some teams that can one day be at that level. They wouldn't be anywhere close now. But why would you do all of this, lose all the money to basically end up in the same spot you were in before? So, yeah, I don't buy that at all. If that happens again, there need to be pretty massive changes at, at both universities. TJ, the only the the only thing that I could see here that that makes me think, all right, I understand how Clemson is being overvalued is 15 years ago. I bring this up on every show 15 years ago from a revenue standpoint, Bowling Green brought in more football revenue than Clemson. No one really cared about that brand or entity. They won to create the brand. They won a couple of national championships. They were a mainstay in the college football playoff that created what Clemson is today. Go back to 2005 and Miami had, in essence, what Clemson has today that that brand that has been there on the national stage that in the last two decades has dissipated for the hurricanes that's why you hear mutterings of them coming to the big 12 not having the prowess for the sec or the big 10 for a clemson is that going to be part of this the idea that in 20 years that brand might not be as powerful if they don't keep winning like nebraska can stop winning and still be nebraska does clemson have that kind of sway to woo the sec or big 10 yeah, I don't know if they have as much like cachet as Nebraska does, but I, I think they do. And, yeah. you know, even as a Florida State guy, like Clemson's donor support and really what they have built that brand into being, I mean, really only being like, what, two hours from Atlanta, uh, yeah. hour and a half, maybe it is super helpful. They recruit in the most fertile territory in all of college football there in, in like the South Georgia area. And then they come down into Florida and do a really good job here too. their donor support. Like they, they have a larger donor support and more people giving annually than Florida state does. They did a great job with their Ipate, which I pay 10, everyone pays $10 and, and you're part of the booster membership and then they've done a good job excelling it from there. I think the leadership is in the right place. I think that where that brand is right now is in a really good place. And I think there's a chance that it could fall off, but I think we will eventually get to a model and this may open up a whole nother can of worms to where I don't think relegation would be quite a, um, what college football would ever go to. But I do think there would be almost like a, almost like a salary cap where you, you know, there's a floor and you have to invest this much in to your sports to be good. And if you refuse to invest this much in your sports, we're not going to take you into the big two leagues or whatever league that is. And I think as long as Clemson, all that say, if, if Clemson just keeps investing like they are, they'll continue to be a, a pretty strong brand. I think based on where they recruit, based on what they've done recently, as long as they don't make some terrible hires year after year after year, they should be fine. But you even look at programs that make terrible hires year after year after year. I mean, we're in Florida. Look at UF and look at Miami. All it takes is one good hire and that UF brand is back or that Miami brand is back. And so I don't know. I, I think Clemson will stick around. It would be my kind of gut, my leaning on that in 20 years. The and. 
to to really tie all together what you just said with the whole, hey, can you afford to be an elite college football program? That's what Charlie Baker, the NCAA president, wants. Let's create this almost super league of teams that can afford to be in the super league moving forward who make their own rules. That's the, the NCAA president is the one who wants that, though you could argue he's grasping at straws to keep everybody happy in an age where nobody is happy. But when it comes to Florida State Clemson, I know we mentioned the whole Big 12 thing, the Dennis Dodd thing. Kind of his, his point there was that ESPN could take those two properties and say we could make more money from you in the Big 12 or creating three Super Leagues. Does that make any sense in your brain? Because I'm not sure if that registers for mine. Yeah, I don't think Florida State and Clemson, as much as I am an an ACC guy, right, or or whatever, a Florida State guy, I don't know if they have enough. I mean, that wouldn't create a big three to me, right? I mean, look at where the ACC is. They're already so far behind. And I'll say the the Big 12 is much more competitively balanced and has a lot more like you've got, you know, to me in the ACC, you've got Florida State and Clemson and then, you know, then then kind of some, uh, you know, North Carolina, Virginia, Miami, maybe North Carolina can bump up into that top one. But then, you know, Past that, I mean, I, th- I don't think you're working with very much. I think you're working with teams that might fit into the Big 12. And the Big 12 already has, like, it, outside of the brand power of Florida State, Clemson, maybe UNC, maybe Miami. I, don't, I think the Big 12 has a better l- roster down the, down the chart. Yeah. But I don't think it's, like, world's better from a, you know, from a TV revenue standpoint, from a media rights standpoint. I think they're pretty, you know, both conferences are pretty on par, especially when you factor in Florida state kind of having the, the, the cachet and the floor and, and Clemson being at the top there as well. And so I think both conferences are similar. So I don't know that adding Florida state and Clemson makes the big 12 anywhere near what the sec and the big 10 have. Like, I don't, to me, it's still, a, it helps the conference, but it, it doesn't bring it up to par at all. Not a direct comparison, but it, it's certainly not direct, but if you add Florida state and Clemson to the big 12, you get the big 12 with Texas and Oklahoma, which you just had, which was yeah. still behind the That's sec and the big 10. You yeah. know I mean? It, that that to me is what it creates, which is not a necessarily a third super league because you're still you've still got that gap between the major conferences and where the Big 12 is. But how, how can we close that gap then with other ACC entities like an NC State, a Louisville, a Pitt, maybe even if we're lucky in Miami? Let's talk about that next on Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. If you like fire and TVs, don't put them together in the literal sense, but do it with Fire TV, Amazon.com forward slash locked on Fire TV specifically. So you, you can go there and you can watch Locked On. All your favorite destinations, sports, live games, highlights, in depth analysis, Fire TV offers you just this little thing. You can plug it into your TV and then bam, Fire TV, live TV, or you can buy the actual Fire TV itself. They recently created Fire TV channels, deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands and it's free it's free it includes all of us here at locked on as well as the pro leagues and college conferences as well fire tv channels lets you dive into all the games analysis highlights more on the nba march madness mlb not to mention great news entertainment gaming travel everything you need at fire tv the channels are spectacular it connects to your alexa it's convenient and right now at amazon.com forward slash locked on fire tv you can find out more trust me on this one amazon.com forward slash locked on fire tv TJ Pittenger talking college football expansion and how the Big 12 can grow. The gap is there. We've seen the SEC and the Big 10 are making almost twice as much as this league in the college football playoff revenue distribution. How do we then, during the look-in clause where everything's reevaluated, grow the Big 12's brand? Brett, your market argue it's putting the game on the big screen in New York or going down to playing games in Mexico. But to me, it's got to come from poaching off ACC teams when that conference falls apart. TJ, what is reasonable? Which schools are reasonable to be in the Big 12 in the next three years? So if I'm the Big 12, I try my best to create. I almost think there's a there's a, I'll back up some. I almost think there's a, a danger in comparison. And so if I'm the Big 12, I have to kind of accept my place as I probably cannot get to where the SEC 
and the Big Ten are. But what I can do is make the Big 12 as good as possible. And I was watching Josh Pay last night, and he said, the Big 12 is probably going to be my favorite conference to watch because there's going to be more competitive balance there. And in college football, it's it, it's gone away from this, but the regular season means so much. And the revenue and the TV dollars that come in because of the regular season are phenomenal. Yeah. And that just isn't necessarily the same in other leagues, the NHL, the NBA, the MLB. I think the regular season is just there. It's a means to an end. You get to the postseason and we find out who the champion is. That's all people care about. Most people that are not diehards of a certain sport or team literally just tune in for the NBA playoffs or the NHL playoffs or the MLB. Playoffs. That's all they want to see. College football is different. And so the Big 12 can just focus on making the Big 12 product as good as it possibly can be. I think they'll be fine. But if they try to compete with the SEC, if they... I, I don't I think they kind of need to like own their role and almost like the way that the Big Ten and the SEC are working together. The Big 12 should work with the SEC and the Big Ten, too. There shouldn't be this competition because they're never going to beat them. They're never going to get ahead. And so if they can work almost in conjunction with them, like the Big Ten, and the SEC seem to be doing, I think it's going to be better for them long term to actually answer the question you asked. I think Miami is the jewel they need to get right away. Yeah. I, I personally think that Miami will have a home in the SEC or the Big Ten. Uh, I, I just think that that brand still matters enough. And, and I think Mario's really close. If, if they can have a nine or 10 win season this year, I mean, shoot, he had a top five recruiting class this year and they won six games. Right. Yeah. And so I, I think that if they can find a way to get Miami, that would be huge. A Miami, maybe you pull Duke in and and really try and go hoops heavy there. I know hoops doesn't make the same that that football does, but they would be a good pull. I think Louisville would be a good pull because you're you're right there. You've got that rivalry with Kentucky, which would be really really big. But again, to me, Miami is the I don't want to say the crown jewel, but like. If it, Miami really is to me going to fit into the SEC or Big Ten somewhere, but if the Big Ten, the Big Twelve could pull them, that'd be huge. If you could somehow get, uh, you know, I think Virginia is going to wind up in one of the Big Two. But if you can yeah. pull Virginia Tech and get into that market, what do you get paid for getting into that market? If you could pull an NC State, which I've heard NC State is tied to North Carolina, so that might be a tough one to go pull. Yeah. But that's why Duke might be a good one to go pull and get into that North Carolina market as well. Plus, you get the benefit of hoops, though Duke probably doesn't bring you a ton football wise. Um, although they they're investing a little bit with Manny Diaz and they had a nice year last year with, um, with Cutcliffe. So I, I think that I'm sorry, not Cutcliffe. Um, who is the who, other day and M guy. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, Cutcliffe was way back. So I, you know, I think that Miami has got to be your top priority. If you can get a Duke, if you can get a Louisville, if you can get a uh, Virginia tech, I think those would be really good markets to get into some good natural rivalries with other conferences. Virginia tech, West Virginia would be a fun one. That's already in existence. Uh, those would be the four that I would go after really hard. Yeah. Uh, interesting there that Pitt was left off the table, though. I think if their name was thrown in the hat with that, it, it would it would exist as something that I wouldn't hate. And it does bring a rivalry with West Virginia as well. Yep. Um, maybe the one thing that I want to end on here is I, I've been saying like Virginia and North Carolina are schools that seem highly touted to the Big Ten and and the SEC even the consensus from listeners has been, well, those teams don't really win consistently in football. They don't, you know, those aren't power brands in football, but to me, and what I continue to reiterate, it's more about your, your profile, your, your valuation, how much money you are worth as an athletic department. Can you speak on that at all? Because to me, it's, it's not that football wins equate necessarily a brand in totality. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, you know, Nebraska has not been very good and they haven't gotten booted out of the uh, big 10 yeah. here recently. Yeah. So yeah, Virginia actually makes more revenue or made more revenue two years ago than Florida state did. Now it was by like a hundred thousand dollars and numbers kind of get funny once you're, you know, getting that intricate, but yeah. Virginia makes a lot of money and their basketball program. It makes a lot of money and they do a really good job raising money. It would also be a brand new market. Right. And so that's a big thing that I think people are leaving out is the new markets for TV. I think that when you look at, um, you know, they don't want SMU because the Big 12 is already in, you know, the teams are already right. there, right? The right. SEC is already in tech. They want a team like Virginia, which is a brand new market. When you look at Virginia, Virginia Tech, is Virginia, Florida State or Clemson? No. Does Virginia 
beat out Virginia Tech? Yes. Yeah. So then you take them, right? Same thing with UNC. Mm-hmm. Obviously, UNC hoops brings you an absolute ton, and they've been okay in football, right? Like they've been a perennial yeah. eight nine win team for the last few years. They've put a couple of high draft pick quarterbacks into the league, and I think that they have a, a slight investment there. They want to compete at the highest level. Um, I still think they're a basketball school. I still think that's where they lean. But to me, it comes. I mean, though, yeah, those teams are not lighting things up on the football field, but with the money of the SEC and the Big Ten, how competitive could they be? And they could be a lot more competitive at that point. So to me, it's more about the media markets than them necessarily winning a ton of games and being, you know, Florida State in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. So if you're a Big 12 fan and somehow this conference lands Virginia and your first thought is, well, they only won two games or one game last. No, no, that is what, what you miss is the money that comes with a brand like Virginia and the way they are valued across the college football platform by TV companies that give you that money tj this beautiful ah, i love it the whole expansion conversation to me and the ins and outs of, of what can happen and how it will happen the word impossible doesn't exist here yeah. and and that's why i love it though it is killing a, a good portion of college football but what i love about your content is you read a headline that's that's big that's brash and you get exactly that with each and every one of your videos it's not a clickbait it's not a oh i clicked on this it said it was going to tell me this but there was something different you stick to what you know from sources where can folks find more of your stuff yeah check us out at college football addiction here on youtube um also do a florida state specific show called double fries no slaw to shout out to the uh the good folks at Guthrie's in Tallahassee. So um, yeah, check both those out. Conference realignment stuff is all on college football addiction. Sometimes I'll go really intricate on it on the FSU channel, but uh, yeah, check us out there, but we have a good time with it. This has been, it always will be for you folks out there listening come back tomorrow. We'll talk more about big 12 basketball being the best conference in the land, even though it doesn't have a final four team. And what can Brett Yormark do to bolster this conference as a whole, even going to Mexico. This has been, it always will be locked on. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Dose grande. All right, we're out. That's it. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yep, you a couple minutes extra. Dude, that was perfect. You, that's what I've needed. That's so yeah. good. Yeah, that's awesome. I enjoy it. I like doing it a lot, so.